Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I kind of wanted to show you guys a little bit of the new character that I'm working on for Grimnon. Now I don't know how far I'm going to take this character. My ritualist, uh, I kind of stopped. He was doing pretty solid. The pet build is phenomenal. Um, but the only problem with the pet build is, well it's not really a problem, it just takes a long time to farm this specific gear for uh, basically the sets, and the only thing I really need to do is attempt like one or two mythical bosses, so I figured I'm going to play at least one more character before I stop Grim Dawn on this session. And let me tell you, this character has been an absolute shithole to try to level because I'm doing something really wonky. You guys know me, I like to kind of make my own characters, so that being said, I found this weapon called Nadon's Reach, and I've never really played like a melee build in Grim Dawn before. I mean, I've played them to like, you know, level 20, 30, 40, 50, but that's not really playing a build in Grim Dawn, right? So I found this weapon called Nadon's Reach, and basically it plays around a skill called Ring of Steel. Ring of Steel basically is a ring of steel, okay? So with that being said, it feels like a really clean skill. Um, you basically use it. Anything that's in the area gets hit. It's not clunky. It's just a ring of steel. Now... Normally, skills like this cannot really be used as main skills because their AoE is too low, their duration sucks, they don't have good single target, blah, 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 blah. However, Nadal's Reach specifically adds 1.5 meters to Ring of Steel, which puts it from 4.5 to 6, which is actually pretty big. Uh, a big AoE in Grimdown would be something like 9 to 10 meters, so 6 is pretty solid. Also, it's a two-handed weapon that comes with cooldown reduction, which is cool. Usually, I see those mainly on, like, caster offhands and maybe, like, some caster-oriented shields. So, uh, basically, it's going to be a Nightblade build uh, around Ring of Steel and more so piercing damage. So, this weapon rolls up to, like, 75%, uh, I think, elemental damage converted to piercing. So, when used in conjunction with, like, a blue ring or even an MI shoulder that you can find, you can find all this on Grim Tools. I'm not really making a guide. I'm just letting you guys know what I'm playing. Um, you can get a really easy conversion to pierce. So, that means that flat physical scales really well on you because the weapon has 100% armor piercing. So, physical is kind of like piercing if it's flat, sort of. It's complicated. Fire damage, Ellie damage, lightning damage, cold damage, if it's a flat numeric, all gets converted to piercing. Piercing damage is piercing damage. So there's a lot of ways to scale the character, which is really, really interesting. So I decided to start off with Nightblade, and I will again say that, you know, this is a really shit character to level. I just want to put that as a disclaimer, so if you start playing the build and your character sucks, there's a reason why. It's because the character sucks. So, um... Nightblade, obviously, we kind of have to play because we're Ring of Steel. So basically, I rushed Ring of Steel, um, was killing with essentially like Blade Burst and Ring of Steel. Um, I've got points into the passives right now, mainly because Pierce Resist, um, Reduce Freeze, Reduce Petrify. Those are actually two really nice things, Petrify and Freeze Reduction. It also gives flat armor, which is kind of needed because I'm using the low car set to level. And low car set has absolutely dog shit armor, which means that the flat armor really helps scale it. Um... I've also got like one point in Blade Barrier for the oh shit button. It's basically an iframe. Um, I also like the Anatomy of Murder because if you see that damage to humans, that's a multiplier. So I have damage to humans from here. And then I only have one point in Blade Burst, mainly for the Lethal Assault buff. I didn't really like this very much at the beginning, but since I will be converting Elemental to Piercing, that Cold Damage will be converted to Piercing. And with this blue weapon that I found, Blade Flurry, actually makes the build playable low level. Uh, Blade Flurry converts Cold Damage to Piercing, which makes this scale better. Uh, then Inquisitor, this is kind of a toss-up because I feel like Inquisitor, Shaman, and Soldier are all really good picks. And it's difficult to say what is better because you really have to have your gear to find out what's better. Because if you end up using a set and your set augments, you know, a certain class specifically, then, you know, maybe you should have won that class or you respec into it uh, or vice versa. It's just, it's kind of like a toss up right now. So the reason why I went Inquisitor is because I wanted to really chunk mobs. So Aura of Conviction is really nice because it gives flat piercing, percent piercing, offensive ability, fizz resist, and reduction to burn. So this is like absolutely like fucking huge for the build. Um, currently we also have Word of Renewal. I've also got Vigor Max because it gives huge health. Actually it's not really huge but it's, it gives health. 
Also gives that reduced freeze, entrapment, and petrified duration that I was talking about before, which makes it really, really nice. Getting frozen on this character is really bad because you're basically a really squishy character that does no damage. Uh, then we've got Steel Resolve, you know, basically gives flat fizz. A nice, really good stuff. Remember I told you fizz will be very good for us once we get our weapon that gives full armor scale or armor piercing. We also get that multiplier again to Chthonix Eldritch, and then we get the two most annoying resistances, Aether and Chaos. Um, and then I haven't really picked up Inquisitor Seal and a bunch of other stuff. There's also like Death Sentence, which is really good because it minuses their Pierce Res. But it's really, really annoying to use because there's just so many buttons to click already. And you'll see basically what I'm talking about. So that being said, enough talking. Let me show you guys the build. So we're in Ultimate. Our resistances are pretty shit. If anything, Chaos attacks us. We're basically going to die 11 times, but, you know, we'll pretend like that doesn't happen. Um... Yeah, we don't really have much, just like the low car set and this weapon. This weapon is pretty much the highlight of what's going to be doing work, is the Empowered Blade Flurry. Um, it's also important to keep up our pneumatic burst, and with that being said, let's go. Oh, oh, the Devotions. One last thing. So if you, if you see the Devotions, basically the Shadow is this guy, Living Shadow. He actually leeches to us, or to us which is really, really nice. Some other important things to highlight, we can, the cool thing is we can change so much on the devotion because remember I told you that we scale elemental, which means I could literally build into Olsen's torch, grab meteor shower, and if you look at meteor shower, it has physical, physical is great, right? I don't know if that physical would pierce because I don't know if it's proc from the weapon because it doesn't have weapon damage scaling, again, very complex. Uh, then there's also the fire damage, which would get converted to piercing. I did plan on potentially taking Blizzard because Blizzard is just four points and it would give us main hand damage, cold damage that's converted to piercing as well. But again, you know, everything is in theory. It's really hard to say. Um, I also do want to state that I have a mobility skill which made this build feel so much more fun. If you are playing it, I recommend on trying to get your hands on a Glyph of Sudden Strikes or something similar to it that does main hand damage or piercing. We get the double blink strike action in this build to make up for the lack of everything. Makes the build at least feel like somewhat good for now. We're also using a behead, which is granted from our component and our weapon. I've got one point in Shadow Strike from Nightblade, so you'll see me kind of blinking around every so often here or there. I also do have uh, the Devotion, what is it called here? The uh, Assassin's Mark on our Blink Strike, which basically means that when our Blink Strike crits, where the fuck? When our Blink Strike crits, we reduce their Pierce Res, which is really nice for a more hit and run style. Only problem is you do need to be able to crit the targets, and being as character doesn't really have that good of gear um it's a bit difficult to actually like crit consistently wow that was rude okay okay game you're memeing me now why do you keep doing that But you can see that Ring of Steel, Ring of Steel along with my mobility skill, they don't have that big of a cooldown. So chaining them together with some more CDR, I think would feel really, really nice with the build. I also did use um, Horn of Gander leveling up as Inquisitor here. It's pretty nice because it has like 10.3 10 meters, I think, at rank 11 or no, rank 13. It doesn't do that much damage, but it's enough damage, like, these guys here would probably... They'd probably get one shot by Horn of Gander. It'd probably do, like, 15, 15k or so. Maybe 15k crit. Maybe do, like, 10k. But I decided to drop it now because, you know, we're getting higher level and I've got to spend my points a bit more wisely. Okay, here we go. So we're going to try to get that debuff. Nope. So I'm going to run away. Re-engage. No, no debuff. Okay. Hit him. Re-engage. Oh, there we go. Got it. 
Uh oh, don't wanna get hit by no 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 bad 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 bad. Woo. Okay, okay, you can see the leech from the shadows. It's not that much right now. They're uh oh uh oh. They're they're a little weak right now, so you know. Like I said, th this character has a long way to go. The goal for the character basically is uh, to have these shadows here do enough damage so that they can consistently leech to me while I have like a sort of hit and run playstyle. I have no clue how it's going to do for the bigger bosses but for farming um, I'm going to try to make it so my ring of steel does like a shit ton of damage. One thing to note is I will be getting circle of slaughter soon which will ramp up the pierce damage and the crit damage and it will give a chance to fumble. The reason why fumble is really good is I believe when you pair in Fumble with like all of the chance to dodge we're gonna get from say for example like uh, Shadow Dance and just in general like on our Devotion Tree I think we have like 2% here so we'll have probably like 20 30 plus percent to dodge I think maybe a bit more from gear and then we can fumble targets which is really nice as well so we will probably get hit like quite hard but then we'll leech it up so we're trying to go for a more like evasion based style I guess you know kind of similar to like how evasion works in Path of Exile but that being said as I've said this a lot, it does come a, a lot down to gear since we don't really have a specific set. Since I do really want to use the two-hander than a Dawn's Reach, and by forcing myself to use a two-handed weapon with a Night Blade, I do limit a lot of my potential for my character, but it's just something that I really wanted to do. Anyway, though, that's pretty much about it. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. As always, if you did like the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care. Hope you guys had a great 420.